Remember the video of the big bastard power supply? Well, this, folks, is the big F off amplifier. Dare I say it, but it's not quite worked out exactly as I planned. So, in that last video, a couple of few weeks ago, you may remember that we were talking about, well, I knocked up some design plans for a 833A amplifier using those lovely massive 833As. Well, as you can see, uh, things don't always work out according to plan. So, what we've got here is an amplifier that I built up with two 3500Zs, which are, to be honest with you, mm, they're okay, a bit conventional, I guess, but uh, I bought all these parts for this um, 833A amplifier, which, to be honest with you, I just could not get to work. Um, you know, with two tubes, I don't know how the other people have done it. There's a couple of guys on the internet who have used two tubes and used them in swamp grid, but, you know, I just could not get that to work. Um, so I basically abandoned it, and I've just base, base, and I've, I've built up this amplifier using a couple of three five hundred Zs, which um, I'll just take you through briefly. I mean, it's it's nothing um, out of the ordinary. It's very very conventional. Um, so this thing will give about a hundred watts for every ten watts you put in it. Okay, so and I'm and I'm running it at about uh, just over three thousand volts HT. Now these tubes are not the iMac originals; they're Mac matchlets, which I think. Are, basically made in China um, and they are exported to the US and they are uh, sold uh, from the United States and I think as far as I know the people I get them from or the person I got them from tests them and they they come with you know pre burnt in etc etc so they're supposed to be not bad and I, I mean these things work but um, they are a bit different from IMAX I think um, and the, the problem I've had with these is that the biasing on them you know, um, the standard uh, bias arrangement for a 3500Z is about 7 volts positive on the cathode. And uh, I certainly am not having that, that sort of uh, um, experience with these. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I'm probably not getting as much power out as I would want. Um, so I'm having to use about, uh, with an HT of 3000 volts, I'm having to use a, a bias of about 18 volts, which is... Some people would say it was within limits, um, but I don't get much idling current with that. And I'm not sure if it's a feature of these valves, uh, which, as I said, are, you know, they're not original IMAX by any means. They're Chinese matchlets. Uh, so, um, yeah, but I managed to get it to work. And the problem I was having with the bias was that every time I increased the HT with a bias of, say, 7 volts, the thing kept on blowing the fuse. Um, but anyway, I've solved that with a few diodes and I have managed to get it to work. So it's all very conventional. So just to take you around it, um, that's a vacuum relay for the changeover. Uh, nice, lovely tank coil there. Um, th th this, um, this amp does 160 to 20. It doesn't like 20 meters particularly much. I think it may be due to I've got probably a bit too much capacitance on this um, plate capacitor. Um, that's the loading one. But... It don't do doesn't do 20 meters particularly well 160 80 and 40 is not too bad um, so everything else is pretty conventional blocking capacitors plate choke um, antiparasitics um, and that's it on this deck so I'll quickly turn it over in fact before I turn it over, I'll just show you the front so I haven't actually put any labels on this thing yet so those are the knobs for the uh, tuning uh, load and plate and that's our plate current, which I hope you should be able to see. That's the um, grid current. And then we've got uh, band selects. Uh, that turns the HT on. And I've got my trusty assistant here who is also very interested. Uh, so, um, so there you are. What I'll do is I'll just turn it over and you can have a look on the other side. Uh, as I said, there's not much to see on this. It's a fairly conventional build. There's nothing sort of out of the ordinary. But they, 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 I want to just show you the filament choke, which I think is quite uh, quite novel. Right, so underneath, I'll just zoom out a little bit. So that's what we look like underneath. Uh, so we've started this corner here. This is the Pi input network. Uh, again, uh, it's fairly standard. I had a bit of a job getting it to tune on 20 meters, so I ended up using a just a, basically a parallel tune circuit. 
all the others are, are you know uh, Pi um, Pi input filters uh, and again I think the input impedance of these Chinese tubes isn't quite you know what they say is this, what they say for a pair of 500 Z's um, the input impedance is about 50 ohms or they're about 57 ohms uh, but I'm not sh sure whether these ones are exactly the, what they say they are I might be a little bit higher perhaps because I had some issues trying to get these things to match up to get the lowest SWR uh, but I've, it, at the moment I've got it you know, pretty good and it seems to work alright so there's lovely high voltage relay there which basically turns the HT on and down here you can see that that's all the biasing arrangement so we've got a big Zener diode there which is let me remember 16 volts and I've got a few diodes which you can see there 1N5408s just to add a little bit more voltage on the cathode uh, especially if you want to increase the HT I mean this is the only way I can get this thing to uh, uh, to tame I suppose to get these valves to tame and not to take off because uh, originally with 7 volts I could only imagine HT of 1500 volts which is a bit on the low side for three for a couple of 3500Zs um, so that's the band switch, a few little light bulbs there and then the filament transformer um, that's, a, that's, uh, that's quite a nice one you can get from Hammond they're easily available for Mouser or DigiKey and that will supply uh, the, the, uh, that, was, that will supply both tubes 50 volt 30 amps so the interesting thing here which you might look at that's the filament choke now I did initially use, use a you know what what most people do and that's a uh, ferrite rod um, but I didn't have the right I'm not sure if I had the right sort so anyway I had a, one of these orange toroids which is supposed to be good for a filament choke and I ended up winding the uh, the filament choke on that and it does see it does work quite well actually I got 20 micro henrys on there which is you know sort of in the ballpark uh, but the other problem I had initially when I first fitted the filament choke the the wire that I was using which was pretty chunky um, it was about a two millimeter diameter wire and <laughs> the filament choke was getting really hot I mean 30 amps going through it so I ended up having to redo that uh, with much thicker wire and uh, it's a real compromise because if you use two, if you, obviously if you're using thick wire, you, you can only get a certain amount of turns on the uh, on the ferrite or the or the core that you're using. Um, uh, if you use thinner wire, obviously you can get a bit more inductance, but then the thing's going to get hot because of the current, the, the resistance. So it's a real big, it's a bit of a trade-off. I mean, uh, this was a bit of an experimentation. My f the first choke I put in, it really wasn't satisfactory. Uh, so I ended up having to redo it. This one works really well actually, I'm quite pleased with this. And I get, I've got about 22 micro henrys on this, which for 160 meters, which this covers, um, you know, it works out quite well. So that's the, so we've got the, those two copper bars there are the, uh, for the filaments. And we've got the capacitors there for the input. And uh, that's about it really. So what uh, what I'm planning to do, I've actually finished this now. I've done as much testing on it as I can. I think it, um, for what it is, it works okay. You can't really complain. Um, probably could do. I would have liked to probably perhaps get a bit more output out of it. Um, um, you know, it has because well, I suppose because it's a triode. You know, triode amplifiers do need a bit more drive. Um, but I think it'll turn into a bit of a workhorse of an amp. You know, like I think on SSB it'll be pretty good. Um, so. Uh, I sh I, it should be all right. I mean, the main reason I built this thing was I wanted a, I wanted something better for one si for one sixty meters, and I think this will fulfil that role. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to close it all up now, put all the panels back, and we'll put it <coughs> on top of the uh, power supply, and um, I'll give you a quick demo. There's, there's not much to see, but it'll be worthwhile uh, taking a look. So back in two techs. Okay guys, I've got all this set up, <clears throat> and as you can see, it uh, looks pretty good actually. Um, the amplifier fits quite nicely on top of the power supply, and uh, what we'll do is we'll put some RF into it. Uh, probably on 160 meters, and we'll just put about 50 watts in, uh, just to quickly show you 
it's working. So here we go. Currently running about 3, 000, just under 3,000 volts on the HT. Uh, so heat the amp and getting about just under 650 volts. I managed to get a kilowatt out of this. If I, if I run in about 75 watts, I can get a kilowatt. Um, but <clears throat> I think for the purpose of demonstrations, at the moment, as I said, 650 watts in, uh, sorry, out, and we're putting 50 watts in. Just crank the power up a little bit more just to show you what it can do. So that's about 700 watts. Um, what's really cool is the old, when you put onto single sideband, So this is on single sideband, we're actually into a dummy load, um, but it looks, uh, the Mercury R, R rectifiers look pretty cool I think, they're sort of modulating with the uh, sideband. Uh, GW0, FZY, audio, audio. One, two, three, four, five. GW0, FZY, audio, audio. Test, 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 audio. Audio, audio, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, that gives quite a nice uh, demonstration.